All right, back with Scorsese with drama. And hopefully I get through this quickly because I just watched 40 goddamn movies this whole last week. It's now Sunday and it's a lot. Starting with his first movie, Who's That Knocking At My Door? This is still a good movie, but it's also a very experimental kind of Scorsese finding his rhythm because there's a lot of trying new methods out. Like there's this montage, or not maybe not montage, but character. She's talking about her experience of being assaulted and there's no dialogue. It's just music, the scene. And there's moments like that throughout the whole movie just trying different ways to move the camera and whatnot getting to see a filmmaker at his start but not knowing where he is nowadays it's just really cool to see so the movie's about this guy he's at a bar or a place finds this girl talks to her throughout the film they get married or whatnot they have a house but he gets all kind of weird about her getting assaulted sexually assaulted she tells the story it's super messed up and that's the point in the movie where i was like okay this is getting interesting because before that it was a lot of you know talking and whatnot and also there was scenes of their friends doing stuff which i felt like just went off track track of like why is this here but once this guy hears that he gets all weird about it because he is a religious person i think and there's a lot of i don't know guilt behind it all like i will admit i'm just completely oblivious to anything religious at all really because i don't know i'm just not interested in it really and so he just felt some sort of type of way about it to him he's not able to i guess be sexually involved with her if she knows that she's been assaulted that way but i don't know it's her trauma as well and he's being all weird about it making it about himself essentially both characters by this point now are trying to figure it out just like Scorsese because he's figuring out his techniques his way as a filmmaker and so this movie does feel amateur kind of student filmish like I'm not sure if the actors are new or not but you know they feel like they've been on set for the first time being filmed on the camera this is Scorsese's first film it would make sense that he would have no money asking a studio or whatnot but that's just me assuming but overall as his first movie it's decent Alice doesn't live here now I thought I wouldn't like this movie because it's about this woman who wants to be a singer and I don't know I thought it would be like her her journey of becoming a singer going to auditoriums or clubs playing the piano singing and whatnot but no this movie is really about just the struggles of being a parent and how your aspirations and dreams are on hold when life gets in the way essentially so alice at the very start we see her as a little girl singing and whatnot we cut to very years later very later on she's married has a husband has her son but then tragedy hits her husband dies and now she has to work a full-time job and they can't really afford their house anymore throughout the movie you see her just essentially on a road trip where she takes her and her son just somewhere they sleep in motels or whatnot has to be a single parent which i can't imagine is easy i feel like with you and another partner it's still a struggle to just be like god damn why the hell did we do this and so she has to work these jobs not so great jobs like a waitress or whatnot and she doesn't make enough they have to move from motel to motel and despite all of this she still wants to be a singer she starts singing at this one club and she's great the actress is great and she really wants to go through with this however again life just gets in the way you have a plan Plan and somehow somewhere your plan is just gonna get messed up because it doesn't go the way that you want to she meets this one nice guy turns out he is a complete drunk and asshole and so guess what she has to leave she drives off with her son they don't live there they go to another motel her son's very frustrated because they keep moving along and along talking shit because he's naive and oblivious to what life is like there's even one point where she just kicks him out because she needs to go be alone and just start breaking down because her life kind of sucks right now it's not the best but then she's like okay you know what? i gotta get my son back gotta be responsible and then she meets another guy who like starts hitting her son because he talked back to him i think and so she leaves but i believe he comes back around and she's like okay sure i'll be with you because they really love each other which i didn't really buy for a second because the whole movie is about her the struggles of being a single parent moving paycheck to paycheck motel to motel part was like okay i guess there needs to be a happy ending because having this movie end with her just being completely in tragedy would be really messed up really but in the end there seems to be happiness this whole movie is about just you know the struggles of life being a parent and at the end there is you know something good to look forward to essentially the last temptation of christ so like i said earlier i'm not religious i don't really think about it or care about it going into this i was like okay is this movie about just essentially jesus how or what he believes in and his struggles of being this person essentially and that's essentially what it kind of is however what does help is that willem dafoe is playing jesus and he is great in the role he already has like a very skinny looking body and like the only time i feel that he's been a very real threat is in the spider-man movies so seeing him in this was like okay you know what this 
is a great choice. Jesus is going through a lot of struggle in this movie. He's going through a lot of ridicule and doubt and torture because I feel like everyone's gone through this. Being ridiculed, whether you're being ridiculed for, I don't know, your beliefs, what you believe in, your looks, uh, I don't know, heritage, something ridiculous, torture, maybe you feel trapped within your own body, and then doubt, which I feel like everyone has doubt because who doesn't? If you have no doubt, you gotta be just the most confident person or you're just lying. And so with all these like struggles and doubts, it makes him and his movie very relatable because everyone knows about, you know, ridiculed and being tortured literally or mentally or through other means and then having self-doubt. And so he's having a lot of that throughout this whole movie, talking to people, people being like, who the hell are you? And why are you doing this? The whole like cross symbol, which I feel like now has been in fashion for a long time. Like I remember back when I was younger, whenever I would see a cross, I would always think of Jesus Christ because of the whole like, you know, being hanged on there and whatnot. But I feel like since, I don't know, like 20 years ago, maybe, hold on, maybe it's been, I don't know, more or less, but either way, cross symbol has become more than just, you know, Christian and Jesus Christ and whatnot. It's become a fashion. People have it on posters, necklaces, bracelets. Some artists use it as a cover for their album. I guess some people might find this movie, I guess, offensive. Maybe not offensive, but just this isn't Jesus or whatever. But I don't know. I feel like you go in with a very open mind of being like, okay, this is Scorsese's like telling of Jesus and his struggles of having doubt and not knowing what to do. I feel like you're gonna come out of the movie enjoying it a lot more because it is very relatable in that way of having self-doubt bringing out the dead so i've already talked about this movie on one of the nicholas cage videos so this will be a very quick recap where cage is playing a paramedic he's good in the role because movies about him slowly descending into madness whether he sees you know dead people or he wants to think about killing his patients because if i remember from memory which is not the best drugs i believe and like because of the work that he's in he sees some crazy ass shit and i feel like over time you just start to lose yourself and be like you know what maybe it's better off if i just do whatever i want essentially and then there's this other plot thread where this girl wants to save her father Cage is there being like yeah sure I'll save him and he slowly but surely wants to kill him because he's just going insane but I thought the movie was good it was well done because again it's Scorsese can't really make a bad movie I feel but I like the movie it's good I would recommend you watch it because Nick Cage that's it just go watch it Hugo. This is a weird one because I don't really see Scorsese directing a movie about fantasy or I don't know, just something like this. This movie feels like a live action Disney produced type movie for little kids or on a Disney channel or Disney Plus. So with that being said though, this movie isn't for me really. And if I'm being honest, I don't really remember much from it. So I think it's about this little ass boy who for some reason likes looking behind large clock towers, I think. Meets an old man because he has something of his, I think. He meets this girl who's played by Chloe's Grace Moretz. They have a thing, I think. Maybe. The only thing I remember liking is the homage to old movies. Like, they go into this theater, they stick into it, they eventually get caught. But both him and Chloe Grace, they watch like a movie on Charlie Chaplin and old stage movies. That's like, okay, this is interesting. And by the end of the movie, you figure out that this little ass boy wants to tell his own story because, I don't know, I guess he wants to be a filmmaker or something. Like, this is how much I just don't really remember and care about Hugo. So yeah, Hugo is a movie not really for me and then ending it with silence the only thing i knew about this movie was that adam driver andrew garfield and liam neeson were in the movie so when this movie was really about religion i thought oh wait this is kind of surprising but it's also religion in japan because no one really knows unless you are in japan itself but their religions and what they believe in and whatnot and so it is a very interesting movie in that aspect i believe japan in this movie at least they believe in buddhism not christianity because for some reason it didn't take off in japan i will say though this movie will not be for everyone this is a movie not really for me but it's more a movie that i can appreciate a lot definitely not a bad or even okay movie it's well made it is very slow at first i guess throughout and it is quite long but the story that it's telling it is interesting and taking its time and so if you're down with that you're gonna be pleased andrew garfield and adam driver they are christians or i think they both believe in christianity and they're trying to look for liam because he's gone he's missing and throughout their journey they realize that japan isn't really like them in terms of beliefs and then very later on he meets like the elders of japan or maybe not elders but just old people believing their ways they decide to imprison garfield because of what he believes in and whatnot and like i guess in a way this movie is about just don't be judgmental essentially just don't judge because they immediately judged andrew garfield and so with all that it comes with fear acceptance and doubt just like in the last temptation of christ andrew garfield's character is having doubts having fears about not being accepted a part of you know his own beliefs and whatnot because this day 
different from what Japan really believes in. And we're kind of going through the same things, but I think done a little bit better in this movie. And that's probably mainly because of Andrew Garfield. He is a really good actor. Even in the most recent Spider-Man movie, he's like the best part about it. In terms of acting, and so seeing him here, no shock that he's really good in it. And then going back to the whole acceptance thing, even until the very end, Garfield, who is like being burned up and dying, he still remains a Christian, despite of Japan and their beliefs. And so, wait a minute, hold on. What happens to, I forgot what happened to Liam Neeson. He's not a Christian no more because I don't think he wants to die, I think. I think that's what happened. You know what? I'm just going to assume that happens, even though it's not. And then Adam Driver, he, I think he also gets imprisoned and gets tortured for his beliefs and whatnot, judging these people based off of their beliefs and whatnot. So, Silence, it's a really, like, well-made movie that won't be for everyone. This movie isn't, again, really for me, but I can appreciate it for being just a damn good movie. And that was it for Scorsese's drama. Aside from Hugo, all these movies are good. Some I might know more than others, like all the religious movies I don't know about, but they're still being well-made because of Scorsese. So, that is it for me. This has been The Road So Far, and thank you for watching.